fellow students the topic for today's discussion is a species concept okay the word species in latin it actually means kinds or types okay the literal meaning of the word species is kinds okay and in biology species can also be called as a fundamental unit in biology or it is also known as building blocks of biological classification numerous definitions have been proposed okay so that is why species is also considered as a concept and concepts are constructed by the human mind there is no particular definition of species okay that there are so many concepts of species option in this video i am going to discuss with you some of the major concepts of species okay so uh, the term species has dual connotation or two meaning okay so when we think about a species two things come into our mind the first one is that the species is a naturally occurring group of individual organisms that comprise a basic unit of evolution okay so when we think about species we think about a group of organisms for instance homo sapiens we humans we are a group of individual organisms we are a species when we think about species that is the first thing that comes into our mind all right and there, there is second connotation or second meaning of species that comes into our mind that is uh, species is a category within a taxonomic hierarchy governed by various rules of nomenclature so second thing that comes in our mind while we when we think about species is that it is a taxonomic category one of the rank in the taxonomic hierarchy in and it is governed by basic uh, rules of nomenclature however icn that is international code of nomenclature for algae fungi and plants has attempted to clarify the meaning of the word species okay they have said and i quote species are convenient classificatory units defined by trained biologists using all information available so every every facet of the term species has to be included in the defining of the species all right so given below listed are some of the concepts of species these are given by uh, different people from different perspectives okay each of these concepts are relevant in different situations okay so there are nominalistic species concept typological species concept taxonomic species concept biological species concept evolutionary species concept and biosystematic species concept and there are some more okay and i will be discussing in detail uh, some of them all right the first concept is the nominalistic species concept it was proposed by okum and it is defined as uh, species can be defined by the language of formal relations and not by the property of their organisms so what it basically means is species is only a name given to designate or label a particular object in this case a particular organism actually nominalism is a theory in philosophy okay so according to the nominalistic theory species is not a real thing okay species is a concept created by the human man mind okay so they believe that nature only produces individuals but species are just a creation of man all organisms have to be referred to as species only for the purpose of nomenclature at at one time this concept was pre pretty popular in france okay but nowadays it is of no academic interest it is not so relevant today the typological species concept was proposed by john ray and later on it was supported and elaborated by carl linnaeus who is also called the father of taxonomy so according to this concept species is defined as a group of plants which breeds true within their limits of variation now uh, before uh, carl linnaeus and john ray came up with this idea people believed that uh, philo uh, philosophers of that time they believed in a theory called theory of transmutation now this theory says that uh, one uh, a particular group of individuals can evolve into a different kind of individuals or species okay so they believe that wheat can over time turn into barley crocus can turn into gladiolus barley can turn into oats 
okay so this was the theory of transmutation and Carl Linnaeus he was completely against this theory and he refuted this theory because he believed that whatever diversity is there in the world right now it was all created like so since the beginning of creation as created by the almighty creator okay so that was the point of this typological species concept according to this theory there are a number of diversities on earth that exist as a limited number of types these types do not bear relationships to each other and are called species he believed in something called fixity of species The taxonomic species concept as given by Lamarck and Darwin, it is according to this concept, the species is regarded as an assemblage of individuals with morphological features in common and separable from other such assemblages by correlated morphological discontinuity in a number of features. So these people, the proponents of taxonomic species concept, they prioritized morphology over everything. Okay, so according to them, a species can be defined as an assemblage of individuals with morphological features in common. Okay, also the proponents, uh, they challenged uh, Linus's concept of fixity, okay, because they recognized continuous and discontinuous variation and developed this taxonomic species concept, which was based on morphology. So, however, the taxonomic species concept is pretty acceptable in most cases, but there are some um, exceptions to it. It was also modified into morphogeographical species concept. Okay, So, according to that, the species was defined as the smallest population that is permanently separated from other populations by distinct discontinuity in a series of biotypes. So, however, populations that are recognized as distinct species, they, uh, they occur in separate geographical areas and they are generally quite very stable. Okay? And even when they are grown together, they remain uh, distinct. Okay? But sometimes there are some exceptions to that, wherein uh, different uh, you know, morphologically distinct species, when grown together, they readily interbreed and formed intermediate fertile hybrids. Okay, one such example is, here is an example of such where two distinctly morphological species, Platinus orientalis, which is belonging, which is geographically isolated uh, in the Mediterranean region, and another species, uh, Platinus occidentalis, which is in United States. Both of these species are geographically distinct. There is a phenomenon called vicarians, wherein two such uh, morphologically um, distinct uh, species come together, mor morphologically distinct and geographically isolated species, when they come together, they interbreed readily and they give rise to fertile offsprings. Okay, so this is this phenomenon of vicarians. Now, this taxonomic species concept, they have a lot of advantages, okay, because it is very useful. This concept is very useful for taxonomic purpose, especially during identification in the field and herb herbarium, okay. Most species have been recognized using this concept, so on, but there are many drawbacks also because um, this concept, the, um, I mean, characters that should be considered is highly subjective. That means people have their own idea on what characters are to be considered and what are to be not considered. Biological species concept. Biological species concept, which was proposed by Ernst Meyer, he defined species as group of interbreeding natural populations which are reproductively isolated from other such groups. So he put uh, importance on whether the organisms could interbreed or not. So if they can interbreed, that means they are a species. And if they, are, if they do not interbreed, those individuals, then they are not considered as a species. It is a great way to define a species because here no confusion arises. In case of uh, taxonomic species concept, then uh, morphology or the characters of morphology can differ from people to people. People might not agree that a certain character can be considered or some people um, would agree or some people would not agree. Okay, so in that case, the subject becomes very subjective. Okay, each person will have their own opinion. But here, in case of uh, whether they can interbreed or not, so this, this subject is fairly 
objective okay so they, there's no confusion whether they means if they can interbreed means they are a species all right um, but uh, even then, uh, though this concept is widely accepted in the animal kingdom, so when we consider this concept in case of plants, means we have uh, many issues with that because um, most of the plant or majority of the plant, they they reproduce by vegetative reproduction. Okay, so in that case, this is this does not um, fit uh, the interbreeding uh, thing does not fit over there. Okay, and also. Uh, in case of plants, there are uh, various issues. Uh, for example, Ampylo species are morphologically distinct but not reproductively isolated. Here's an example of Salvia mellifera and Salvia apiana. These two, are, uh, these two plant species, they look morphologically distinct. That is, they are different. You can you can see and you can tell that these two are different. These two look very different. Okay, but they are not uh, reproductively isolated, which means that if you interbreed them if you uh, cross pollinate them then they can give rise to an offspring all right so uh, according to uh, taxonomic species concept it is not a species these two individuals they do not fall under the species because they are morphologically distinct but under uh, biological species concept they easily cross breed that means they are a species according to the biological species concept here is another case uh, which is just the contrary which is just the opposite of compilo species here uh, this gilia inconspicua and gilia transmontana are morphologically similar okay that means they are considered as a species according to the taxonomic species concept but if you try to cross breed them no uh, offspring is formed So, which means that they are reproductively isolated, not a species according to the biological species concept. All right. Um, evolutionary species concept, which is proposed by Simpson, Wiley and Meglitz. It is defined by Simpson as an evolutionary species is a single lineage of ancestor descendant populations which maintains its identity from other such lineages and which has its own evolutionary tendencies and historical fate now according to the evolutionary species concept a species is belonging to a single lineage of ancestor descendant populations okay it also avoids many problems of the biological concept which is in biological concept the interbreeding is given a lot of importance so with biological concept was that uh, they did not consider asexual reproduction but here that problem is overcome okay